Sailing is the passion of millions around the globe. But when it comes to harnessing the wind, there's often a choice to be made. Size versus speed. The two seldom go hand in hand. But now, a brand new boat is rewriting the rule book. Black Pearl, the world's largest sailing yacht. Welcome to the Black Pearl. 106 meters, 7.2 meters of draft, 14 and a half meters of beam, sails at 22 knots. We expect it to do 30 knots. Without a doubt, that is unique. Never before has a yacht of this scale been built to sail so fast. Good morning, welcome on board to sailing our Black Pearl. Today, this $200 million feat of engineering is setting out on crucial sea trials in Tarragona, Spain. Captain Chris Gardner heads up its crew. The Black Pearl is completely different from almost every other sailing ship ever built. She's just designed to sail. Drop the ground lines. It is really a modern day miracle. the world's largest sailing yacht. Black Pearl is the length of 10 city buses. Its tri-deck design is equipped with a helideck, state-of-the-art tender garage, and can accommodate 38 guests and crew. All powered through the sea by an innovative three-masted rig, equipped with over 31,000 square feet of sail. It is a sailing machine. It is so on the cutting edge. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. However, creating such a vast vessel poses many impossible engineering challenges. Looking good. How do you ensure the largest hull of its kind will glide through the water? Four feet close. Two, two, one. And stand up to the unpredictable ocean. Every time we leave the dock, it feels great. But perhaps the biggest problem is making this 328 foot long, nearly 3,300 ton super yacht a world class racer. And we're only 10 degrees starboard, and it turns that quick. We want to sail fast. Sure, there's a lot of boats out there that are real flyers, but they're a quarter of the size. To get up to speed, this marine giant requires a staggering 31,215 square feet of sail area. But how do you rig and control such a vast amount of canvas? Could a marvel from the past help with this seemingly impossible problem? Well, this is not how I usually start my days. Naval architect Nick Bradbeer is in Greenwich, London, scaling a supersized 150-year-old speed machine. I am climbing up a tall ship's rigging, and I've never done this before. I'm a little bit nervous, as well as excited. That incredibly could provide an answer for Black Pearl's design challenge. Equipped with 154-foot-high masts, this 278-foot-long maritime masterpiece was once one of the fastest ships on the planet. This is the Cutty Sark, one of the last surviving clipper ships. And back in 1869, when she was built, she was an astonishing piece of engineering. This amazing vessel was the result of a nation's quest for a decent cup of tea a thirst that started 200 years before it was built. Tea was imported from China, from India, and it was all imported by the East India Company. They were the only people allowed to bring tea into England. With no competition, their ships known as East Indiamen weren't built for speed. Their slow, bulky boats now had a major problem. 
wealthy Londoners were willing to pay a premium for that first batch of tea back from every harvest. So an enterprising group of merchants and sailors realised that they could make a lot of money, and that meant they would need a new kind of ship, something that was much faster than anything that had gone before. Scottish shipping entrepreneur John Jock Willis and engineer Hercules Linton came up with a trailblazing solution. The Cuddy Sark was a legendary British tea clipper, named because of her ability to clip off the miles at breakneck speed. The Cuddy Sark was a very fast ship. She did speeds up to 17 knots, which is about twice as fast as the, the ships that came before her, and actually is about the same speed as a lot of merchant ships do today. Her secret, a towering square-rigged three-mast design, a sailing powerhouse that could inspire the Black Pearls team. One of the things that really sets a clipper apart, because she has to go fast, is the sheer quantity of sail that she's designed to carry. Looking up, we've got 11 miles of rigging, 32 sails, nearly 3,000 square metres of canvas, which is just an unbelievable amount. I can't even quite fit them all in my field of vision. She's just a machine for carrying as much canvas as possible, because it's all about speed. The more sail she carries, the faster she can go. The Cuddy Sark and this new class of ship slashed 20 weeks off a round trip to China. It's awesome rig making the most of whatever wind was available. If you're in light winds, you want to cram on as much sail as you can. If you're in, in a heavy wind, then there's only so much sail you dare pack on. But the clipper captains were driven by speed. So even in, in high winds, they keep packing it on to keep that speed up. The Cuddy Sark spent the 1870s speeding tea across the world's oceans. By the 1880s, she was working the Australian wool trade routes, holding her own against a new breed of ship. Even in the age of steam, she was still far outstripping the speed of those steamships over that long run. She's a piece of history, and she's an incredible piece of engineering. Like the Cuddy Sark, the Black Pearl is built for speed. In 2016, its super sleek hull is delivered. But this engineering marvel only comes to life when its epic rig is installed. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, that's it, we're down. Get the bolts in. Inspired by the historic clipper, a trio of masts resembles the Cuddy Sark's iconic design, but their 216-foot height would tower above it. Engineering on this scale produces something special, the world's largest sailing yacht. Chris Gartner captains this extraordinary vessel that's shaped by the past. Based on all the principles of the clipper ship, we've incorporated everything that worked for them using modern day technology and materials. And now we've, we've built a flyer. Black Pearl's standout engineering is its game-changing square-rigged mast system. This is the Dyna rig of the Black Pearl. It's a uh, carbon fiber structure that stands about 66 meters from the water up to the masthead. There's so much engineering in this whole structure, it's mind-blowing. Each of these three masts is flanked by a series of rib-like structures known as yard arms. These subdivide the rig into 15 low-loaded sections, allowing the engineers to unfurl over 31,000 square feet of sail. Today, a sail test is about to get underway. First, a manual inspection must be carried out on one of Black Pearl's massive masts. Going up there, I leave that for the young guys. They, they, in case they fall, we're not really losing as much as if I were to fall off the rig. <laughs> the vertigo-inducing job falls to rigmaster Declan Clamp. It's basically getting hoisted up by a uh, winch. <laughs> And stop. 
He's on truss number six, and he will begin his inspection from up there. View's great. Always a good view from 60 meters up. We take a lot of safeguards in order to prevent any mishaps. Everything's OK up here? Cool. And you get a real scale for the boat up here. You realize how big it all is. Now that the checks are complete, Chris can automatically bring this engineering marvel to life. And I'm going to set the sail. Right now, the four outhaul winches are pulling on the four corners of the sail and dragging the sail out. It's fast to set, days of old. The poor sailors on those boats would be working their you know what's off, uh, climbing up the rigs, pulling them up towards themselves uh, while they're balanced on little tiny foot ropes. And to do all of their sails probably take them hours. Today, Black Pearl sails can be set in less than seven minutes. But the Black Pearl sails can't just be quick to deploy. They also need to be quick to maneuver. To make these mega masts seaworthy, the engineers behind the ship must bring sailing into the 21st century. Revolutionary racing yacht, the Black Pearl, can deploy its massive sails in a record seven minutes flat. But how could engineers keep their 31,215 square feet maneuverable enough to preserve the smooth ride this luxury ship demands? We simply rotate the rigs, the entire mast rotates, and that in turn trims or eases for tuning the sails. It just facilitates something that's much easier to do, much safer to do on a big ship. The innovative engineering that makes this possible is concealed below deck. Yeah, Declan, can you please rotate the foremast 180? Now. Yacht manager Derek Monroe is putting it through its paces. So we're uh, now in the foremast technical space. And in here, we have the foremast tube that comes down. There are four of these mast rotation units, which turn the the mast around as when we need it. And in the middle, as the mast rotates, we need to manage the cables so that they don't get tangled up. And that's what all this is up here, the cable management system. This phenomenal technology rotates 35 tons of carbon fiber mast. Its immense capacity for canvas propels this 3,300 ton super yacht to a jaw-dropping 20 knots. It's revolutionary as far as ease, safety, and efficiency. When we have a full set of sails up, you can actually see the masts moving. It's like a living animal. You can have a maximum of about three to four meters flex at the masthead from zero. These rigs are living and breathing. They're just moving all over the place. The Dynarig is one of the most incredible advances in sailing. In fact, almost everything about the Black Pearl is wildly advanced. It's the largest sailing yacht in the world. A brand new engineering colossus currently taking marine engineering into uncharted territory. At almost 350 feet long and weighing in at over 3,300 tons, this mammoth ship is equipped with two diesel engines. But its crowning glory is its trio of nearly 200-foot-high rotating rigs capable of propelling Black Pearl to over 20 knots. It's captained by Chris Gardner. The horn on the Black Pearl, as impressive as the rest of the boat. Black Pearl's unique supersized design is built to race and break records. For her to fulfill that destiny, every part needs to be in ship shape. Chief Engineer Richard Tatlow must ensure her hull is in perfect shape. When we're racing, we're under sail, and we want to ensure that everything underneath the hull is as streamlined as possible to maximize our speed, because it's all about winning the race. Hi, Alberto. How's it going? Good. 
So currently the guys are uh, kitting up the, with their dive equipment where they're going to go down underneath the hull and they're going to clean our propellers. They're also going to inspect the rest of the hull to make sure we haven't got any um, growth that uh, can cause us drag. Oh. This looks like a band, is it? A is band? A band. Yeah. yeah. Can you see any gone inside? Basically, what we're seeing around the uh, starboard propeller, it looked like a rope. And what we're also looking at is the uh, starboard propeller is heavily fouled, so that needs to be cleaned. It's a good call to get this done. The cleanup's not an issue. But the propellers themselves create a major problem. Used in light winds and to maneuver around harbors, they permanently protrude beneath the hull, compromising Black Pearl's underwater streamlining when under sail. The propellers are always underneath there. We can't retract the propellers. We can only retract our thrusters and our anchor. The drag through the water caused by this pair of almost four foot wide propellers could thwart Black Pearl's racing ambitions. Could an innovation from the past offer a solution to this unfathomable problem? The surprising answer for Black Pearl can be found at a British airfield. Engineer Dan Dickerel is discovering a historic masterpiece currently being brought back to its former glory. Look at this. This is the C-47, one of the most iconic and legendary aircraft of the Second World War. A plane famous for dropping paratroopers over occupied France in D-Day. It's a really beautiful airplane. It's easy to imagine what it would have been like going across the channel over enemy territory with flak going off. In the event that this airplane would lose an engine, the only way to get back safely is to maximize the ability of the remaining engine to get you to the ground safely. But in an emergency, the disabled engine's propellers could create a major problem. Sitting in the airflow, they caused drag which burned precious fuel. The solution was down to American engineer Frank Caldwell. He devised the Hydromatic, a propeller which utilized hydraulics to change the pitch of its blades. Known as feathering, it's a process that could help out Black Pearl. In the event of losing an engine, the pilot reaches up, pulls the feathering button, which feathers the blades of the propeller. The three propeller blades will rotate, taking the fat part of the blade out of the airstream, giving it the knife edge this reduces drag greatly and effectively helps this plane get home safely. Today, Dan is putting his faith in Caldwell's brilliant invention with a daredevil experiment on board a modern twin-engine plane. So currently we're about 3,500 feet and going about 115 knots and we're gonna simulate an engine failure. When I give Captain Rob the signal, he's gonna reach down and cut the power to that engine right there, and we're gonna see what happens. I can't believe we're gonna do this. All right, let's cut it. So, there's some control instability, there's some alarms going off right now. Even though the prop is turning, that engine is actually not generating any power. It's called windmilling, and the broad side of that prop is facing the oncoming air. It's creating a lot of drag. So to maintain this altitude, eventually this airplane will stall and fall out of the sky. This is not a great situation at all to be in. Now, yeah, so we got a stall warning. Luckily, this plane is equipped with a Caldwell-inspired variable pitch propeller. All right, the solution to this problem is we're going to feather the engine, so go ahead and feather, please. All right, so instantly 
there was an effect on the plane. And while it looks scary, the prop's not turning anymore, we feathered the blades. Now the knife edge is into the wind. The airspeed is slowly increasing, so the good engine doesn't have to do as much work. We're no longer in danger of literally falling out of the sky. Since its launch, the Hydromatic has transformed air safety, an engineering breakthrough that has helped shape the history of flight. The team at Black Pearl has been inspired by this aeronautical game changer but their pitched propellers cut through the waves. Copy that, all lines off, all lines off. Captain Chris Gardner is using the props to maneuver the enormous super yacht into open water for today's important sailing trial. Copy that, thank you. Actually, we got a little bit of wind today. Might be good sailing. Below deck, Chief Engineer Richard Tatlow can monitor Black Pearl's cutting-edge propeller system from its nerve center, engine control. As you can see under the water here, our propeller is obviously rotating, providing propulsion for the vessel. Currently, we have a uh, pitch of around about uh, 70 70 percent. So we have there's the shaft line and there's the blades, and we have about that much pitch on, and things are looking pretty good. As the Black Pearl goes through her extraordinary metamorphosis and her spectacular sailing apparatus emerges, will the propellers pitch as necessary or will they be a huge drag as the ship aims to set records? The Black Pearl is about to embark on an important sailing trial. In order to reach its peak performance, the team needs to test the pitching propellers inspired by Frank Caldwell's brilliant aerospace engineering concepts. We would like to set sails in 10 minutes. Is everything away? Yeah, we're all set, Chris. No problems. Just living the dream. The nearly four foot wide controlled pitch propellers go through a change coordinated with the opening of the sails in order to complete this streamlined sailing machine. From a 70% pitched motoring position, the blades are electronically feathered to what's known as zero pitch. So now you can see the props are no longer turning. The blades are in a feathered position in their least resistant position. So now we're sailing and we're dragging them through the water and they are not slowing us down any. The water flows so efficiently over the blades, Black Pearl's sailing speed is increased by two knots. However, the propeller's ingenious engineering doesn't end there. On this giant boat, which consumes the same electricity as 25 family homes, the propeller's pitch can be altered to generate power when under sail. We can turn them into a form of a turbine. Because we can control the pitch, we can allow them to rotate. And as they rotate, they're coupled together on the main shaft line into an electric motor, we can then generate electricity. And the Black Pearl needs all the electricity she can get because she's loaded to the gills with cutting edge technology. The main hub is the ship's bridge where Captain Chris Gardner has some of this mind blowing equipment at his disposal. I think the sailing station is really what makes this boat special. Nothing in the world has this. In order to sail the boat, it requires one person. We can control all masts and turn the rigs all at once or just an individual one. This page here is how we control which sails we would like to set at that particular moment. So you just simply select it and we'll be able to deploy all the sail area in less than seven minutes. This automated rig is one of a kind, but its mammoth proportions create a big problem for its engineers. The huge masts and Black Pearl's sheer scale places the body of the ship under immense pressure. As far as the Black Pearl with the hull, with its length overall, 
all the force is exerted onto the boat itself by the rigs, the sea, there is a lot of twisting and a lot of movement. The engineers need a lightweight material to competitively race, but for a boat this size, if it's not exceptionally strong, the entire hull could fail. If it does go wrong, not only could it be catastrophic for the boat, but it could be tragic for someone's life. Can the pioneers of the past help out with this seemingly impossible problem? The solution for the Black Pearl lies in Philadelphia. Local historian Max Kaiserman is discovering a maritime game changer, born from necessity in the aftermath of the Civil War. The Civil War had destroyed most of what was left of the old sailing navy, and they really hadn't rebuilt yet. The ships that were still left in the US Navy in the early 1880s were wooden ships. The US Navy really needed to step up to a, a more modern material. It was Secretary of the Navy William Chandler who came up with the solution, a new breed of ship constructed with a revolutionary material. So what we're standing next to is the USS Olympia. She's the oldest steel warship left in the world. The shift from wood to iron to steel was monumental. Iron was brittle, wood was incredibly costly and, and weak compared to steel. Made by chemically modifying iron, steel is incredibly strong and light. Much of Olympia's hull is under an inch thick the perfect lightweight solution for her high-speed seaborne operations. The Olympia represents actually an entirely new type of navy and a hull that was able to withstand hurricanes, uh, high seas, and armor-piercing shells from other ships. In the depths of the hull, the malleable quality of steel comes into its own. The steel here is curved into place. It can be welded. You can see where the plates are riveted together. None of that's possible with wood. Uh, it, it's almost impossible with iron. Her sleek lines and super lightweight steel hull enabled Olympia to steam at 10 knots for almost 15,000 miles without refueling. And in the heat of battle, this new material offered unprecedented protection. Where we are now is actually one of the few places that's armored. Around the five inch guns, it's about five inches thick. This steel armor could protect beyond anything wood or iron could do. By 1898, the trailblazing steel ships had transformed the US Navy from obscurity to a global military power. I think Olympia is a marvel of engineering. The Black Pearl is bigger and badder. To apply the brilliant engineering behind the USS Olympia, the designers behind this built for speed mega yacht will have to supersize. Thanks to American visionary William Chandler, steel has enabled Black Pearl's engineers to build the largest sailing yacht in the world. With 21st century technology at their disposal, this cutting-edge giant is longer than the USS Olympia, but at 3,300 tons, it's virtually half the historic ship's weight. And it's still remarkably strong. As far as the material used in the Black Pearl, steel is definitely the best choice. You know, there's the safety factors, the strength factors, and it, it certainly resists so much, you know, from corrosion. It's not so affected by the elements of the salt water. The 790-ton hull carries over 1,400 tons of outfitting weight and 330 tons of ballast. Its unique shape took 14 months to construct in a Rotterdam shipyard in the Netherlands. The flexible quality of steel as thin as 8 millimeters allowed engineers to form a streamlined hull built for speed. A lightweight aluminum superstructure saves vital weight, delivering the impossible. 
a 350-foot-long superyacht designed to break records. But perhaps the standout engineering is Black Pearl's one-of-a-kind bow. The special thing about this is, as you can see, it doesn't look like any other bow you'll see on any other motorboat or sailing boat. The shape of the bow at the lower end um, makes her very efficient through the waves. She, instead of riding through them, she tends to ride over them, but it's fine enough at the same time that she'll slice through whatever you get. But it just means she's much faster. I think when everyone sees how efficient this bow is, they'd be a bit silly if someone didn't copy it. Black Pearl's design is so advanced its team is targeting the 30-knot barrier, a first for a sailing yacht of this size. It excites me a lot to be, be a part of this, to try to break these records. It's, it's just an amazing, amazing, amazing sailboat. But a new ambitious transatlantic goal presents more challenges for the world's largest sailing yacht. But to make its mark, this audacious yacht must have staying power at sea. Millions of dollars have been pumped into innovative technology developed to make Black Pearl self-sufficient. So as you can imagine on Black Pearl, water consumption can be quite high. So what we do is we try and uh, minimize that as much as possible. So this is actually raw sewage that's being compressed through a membrane system, then a series of fine filters through a treatment plant. That water is just used for basically washing down the boat, but apparently uh, I have been told by the manufacturers that you can drink it. And no, I haven't been brave enough to try. Black Pearl's sustainable systems and regenerating propellers are cutting edge, but even these aren't enough to cope with the owner's latest audacious goal, a fossil fuel-free transatlantic crossing. To cross the Atlantic with zero fossil fuels means that we need to manage the power on the boat very carefully. We have all the comforts of home and we want to try and keep them going. On a mega yacht with the same energy demands as a small residential street, Completing a 12-day zero-carbon crossing seems an impossible challenge. But an out-of-this-world historic innovation could offer a sustainable solution for the world's biggest sailing yacht. To make it across the Atlantic without a carbon footprint, engineers behind the Black Pearl sailing yacht are taking inspiration from an unlikely source, early satellites. Physicist Susie Sheehy is visiting Brittany in France, discovering how the answer to the Black Pearl's power problems originated in the stars. At the moment, there's about 2,000 satellites orbiting the Earth, and they're doing everything from TV to data communications. But of course, they weren't always up there. This Radome is at the Plumo Bordeaux Telecom Center, and this has an incredible history in the development of satellite telecommunications. It's, it's absolutely incredible, and it's enormous. During the 1950s, a new era of space exploration unfolded. And with it came the potential to transform global communications. Early satellite experiments successfully relayed signals to and from space. It wasn't long before the global stage was beckoning. Engineers in the US came up with an ambitious new project. They wanted to send live TV images from the US to Europe and beyond. So this is what they came up with. This is Telstar, which is a global communication satellite. It can take live images from the US up into space and back down to Europe, transmitting them across the Earth. But achieving this meant overcoming a massive problem. Like Black Pearl sailing across the vast oceans, to be viable, Telstar had to be totally self-sufficient in the isolated vacuum of space. 
early satellites were powered by batteries and in orbit they'd only last a week or sometimes days before the battery would go flat. So to keep the satellites up there for longer, scientists had to come up with a new solution. In 1954, Bell Lab engineers Calvin Fuller, Gerald Pearson, and Daryl Chapin were developing silicon transistors when they made an unexpected discovery. One of their transistors began producing electricity when exposed to light. Silicon had the potential to produce the first practical form of solar power. A section between differentially charged silicon layers acts as a junction, allowing electrons to migrate, creating an electric field, a process stimulated by light. And it's the flow of those electrons that provides an electric current, which allows us to do work, such as powering a calculator. And you can see there's actually a couple of little solar cells just on the top of the calculator here. The infinite power of the silicon solar cell was the perfect solution for space. But can engineers utilize the same technology to keep the Black Pearl powered up at sea? In 1962, the Telstar satellite was launched, equipped with a game-changing innovation, silicon solar cells. They actually coated Telstar with 3,600 solar cells mounted on platinum and coated with sapphire to protect them from the high levels of radiation in space. And that allowed it to produce about 14 watts of power, enough for it to relay about 600 telephone calls and a live TV feed. To complete a historic live transatlantic satellite broadcast, Telstar received signals from the United States, magnified them by 10 billion before beaming them here to France's Mammoth Telecom Center. This antenna is the first place that received the signal from Telstar. They actually transmitted a TV broadcast featuring President Kennedy. I understand that part of today's press conference is being relayed by the Telstar communications satellite. Viewers across the Atlantic and uh, this is another indication of the extraordinary world in which we live. The success of Telstar helped demonstrate how good solar technology was, not just up in space, but also down here on Earth. From the vacuum of space to the vast seas, Black Pearl's engineers have been inspired to develop their own solar technology. Their ambitious goal to sail the world's largest yacht across the Atlantic without burning any fossil fuel. One of the solutions we've been looking at for the last few years is to put solar cells on the sails. Firstly, we need to consider the weight, we need to consider the flexibility, and we need to consider the cable connections. So that takes us to a uh, technology which is called SIGS, which is uh, about the thickness of a piece of paper. At just half a millimeter thick, the engineers plan to bond this super lightweight, cutting edge system to Black Pearl's sails without compromising their performance. The solar cells, that's very, very flexible. We can easily get the rotation on the sail. We'll probably end up, if we're lucky, at 50% of that with solar cells. That's about 15,000 square feet of solar technology mounted on Black Pearl's 15 sails, set to deliver around 22% efficiency through a network of cabling to the ship's 384 batteries. We should get enough power to run the vessel with all the crew on board and all systems running, which means we should get around about 160 to 170 kilowatt hours. It's enough to provide us with enough power to run the boat without the requirement for fossil fuels. When it happens, it will be an amazing piece of engineering and it will be uh, It'll be phenomenal to see it, and it's just one more step that we're taking in the future to making the boat a little bit greener.